one last thing. I predict that this swirl water is going to solve the problem of me needing to go pee a few times before I fall asleep. I can't stop talking. I'm wondering if taking care of the body, gestures of self-care, not as an ego self, but actual things that are real, like eating proper food, if that creates time, or it changes how we experience time because we feel well and vibrant. And when we feel well and vibrant, then it doesn't really matter so much what we're doing. We're not trying to escape what we're doing because we feel good. And then it moves us beyond bad and good in a way because if we're in that bad and good, Maybe I'm hanging out with a friend, but I'd rather be doing something else because it'll make me feel better. But if I feel so well in that moment, every moment, then I'm not thinking in terms of escaping the moment to get something better, which is very transient, doesn't last long, and then I'm looking for the next thing to make me feel better and better and better because I haven't worked on my wellness. I haven't been given my body the proper food and nutrition. So then we feel time as a drudgery instead of a gift, the gift of the present. And when we feel that well and vibrant, we're giving someone else the gift of our presence because we are present, we're able to be present. I don't know. And I thought of three aspects of an orientation to the moment which are curiosity, allowing, and kindness. Because I was thinking about how I feel in the moment sometimes, wanting to do another thing, not wanting to be around someone, but wanting to be talking to myself, or wanting to be on my computer, or wanting to be at the park. And that's not being curious, it's not being kind to the other person or what it is, and I'm not allowing that. So I'm wondering about those three things. The word allowing came up for me the other day. I've heard non-resistance before, which another way to put that is allowing. And I'm glad I know how this cleansing affects me because once I start eating again, I can go back to a cleanse and perhaps it's a way to increase self epigestretics which then improves one's epigestretic matrix which then helps one embody one's magic one's meaning one's life so yeah the sense of time is different and i'm wondering if time is a sense we think of time as something actual it ticks on and as we experience life, there's evidence that it ticks on. But perhaps it's a sense, like the sense of beauty. There's a sense of richness, perhaps, and a sense of beauty. I think it's related to this non-self state. When there's the non-self state, there's a sense of beauty, timelessness and effortlessness and richness kind of like what Stephen Kotler and Jamie Wheel talk about. I would add in beauty in there. They don't talk about beauty. That could be part of richness, though. I would say, though, that when the sense of self decreases, the sense of beauty increases, the sense of richness, the sense, the sense of self is the effort, so the effort decreases the sense of effort and... The sense of time changes how we sense time passing. And perhaps that's just a sense, just like vision is a sense. <clears throat> vision perception is a sense, and memory participates in that to create our perceptions moment to moment. Perhaps memory 
and the self and the sense of effort participates in our sense of time. And when that's not operating, it feels timeless and things feel beautiful. And some people out there say there's no time, it's the present moment only. So if it's the present moment only, we have perception, we have our senses, and we have the sense of time, our sense of sound and vision, all of those things are aspects of our sense of time. The change in what we see and the change in what we hear creates the sense of time. But our seeing and our hearing has all these elements of the past injected in terms of our conditioning and programming and biases. So that creates partly the sense of time, how our memories play into our perception, all our other senses, creates the sense of time. So I'm saying perhaps time is just another sense. And we all have the same sense of time or we all have the same time in a day, but not everyone experiences it passing in the same way. So people will talk about goals and time management and productivity, but maybe that doesn't matter as much as inquiring into what alters the sense of time. One might say, oh, if I'm productive, I'm getting more done in the same time, but who cares about the concept of productivity? If there's a sense of timelessness, we may or may not be productive. If there's a sense of flow, we may or may not be doing extreme sports or getting a lot done. Can we change our sense of time without having to do anything? I'm not sure what I'm saying, but I'll talk more about that later, maybe. And the word allowing came up when I was talking with a friend through iMessage and he might have said that love isn't allowing or maybe I wrote it down like that but something like that and I wonder if allowing is the only action. Because otherwise it's from the volition of the self which is volitionally trying to do something or act before the moment has a chance to act on us. We're acting on the moment. And I wonder if this is the only doing. Can we allow, can we give space for love to act? And that love is the moment and difficult to describe for example I might want to do a certain thing and I could go and do it or if I change to this allowing orientation somebody might do it for me or something else happens than how I would think that that thing needs to be done like sometimes I'll want to say something and kind of volitionally put something into play and then I wait and the other person says it and brings it up. Can we give space for love to act? And more on how I don't generally force things. I, when I became a vegetarian eight years ago, I remember eating leftover Thanksgiving turkey. I think it was January 4th. And it came to my mind that I would never eat meat again. And I never did, and I never have for eight years. I never say never, but I can't imagine I would eat meat again. So yeah, I feel like the more I've put care into myself lately, people have acted more caring towards me, which then makes me feel more present and not like, oh, I have to be at the park and I can't be around people doesn't mean that never happens, but I'm feeling this subtle dance and learning about it. Curiosity allowing kindness. And I'm still on this thing about creating a creative respite that's a safe space 
psychologically safe to be creative and with a resource library. That's the thing, when I was at my place yesterday and boxing up some of my stuff, I've been away from it for so long, I don't even want it or need it, but I was thinking, I have so many great resources that it could be a self-direction and wellness tool library for people to start designing their life after medication, if that's what they choose. Maybe even before they're off the medication. It'd be cool to have a respite where people taper off the meds, perhaps with the help of micronutrients, and also in the meantime, start thinking about what they want in their life next. Designing their next part of life with these resources. So it'd be a self-direction, creative, co-creative, psychologically safe space. Not only space to go through difficult challenges, but perhaps to overcome those challenges and definitely, meanwhile, designing life beyond that because if one can't do that, then to trade medications for micronutrients isn't really that interesting. But if one can move into a life of one's design, now that is interesting. And design that at the same time because what I'm finding is being off the meds is great, but now what? So on the same wavelength, micronutrients in order for what? So what? And the so what has to be created and for what has to be created. And I'm figuring out some and forgetting most on a daily basis. And I feel like this creative respite or this creative place could be almost like a new Silicon Valley because we go into psychedelic states involuntarily and if we could put that together perhaps we'll come out with the next technological innovation and perhaps it will be an orientation a way of experiencing the world this is transformistical and transformagical i also highly recommend having a singing playlist a playlist of songs in your smartphone that you love to belt out on repeat. And I'm liking living further away from town because it gives me a chance to sing. So long drive, lots of singing. So yeah, lifestyle design. And I feel like this next period of time will be about that and seeing the life that I can create. That might be the most important part to Show people that anything is possible. Tapering off meds is possible and then the life of one's dreams is possible. And I did live the life of my dreams by going to California and live the dream of tapering off meds. So now it's really time to get in alignment with dreams.